morning offering and tithe. If you have to give this morning, you give as unto the Lord. How many knows we can't outgive the Lord? He's always faithful. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we are truly blessed. And God, we are so thankful for this opportunity, Lord, to come together and to be in your presence. And you, God, God, you said if we would lift you up, God, that you would draw us unto you. And Father, I pray today, God, that we would leave here closer to you than when we came in. God, draw us close today and keep us in your care. And Father, I pray for this offering. God, I pray, God, that you bless it, multiply it, and help us, Lord, to use it for your purpose and your glory. We'll never fail to give you honor, praise, and glory. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Let's worship him today. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. My story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Ooh, lay your burdens down. shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore ooh you're in the father's house ooh lay your burdens down ooh here in the father's house check your shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore Prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Prodigals, Prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the Father's in the room. Prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the Father's in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Miracle walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the 
the fathers in the room. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Sing it with me. Prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles take place, the cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Lord. 
Lord, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. There's nothing better. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better Amen. I, when the s- Sister Poole teaches Sunday school lessons, oftentimes, and I'm, I know she's being sarcastic, but she tells the audience that, you know, we're all fine. It's her, the one that has all these issues. And that's not true, Sister Poole. We're right there with you. And I love this line where it says, my failures and flaws. He sees them all. And he still calls me friend. Who else would do that, church? Now, that's not an excuse for our failures and flaws, but he still calls us friend. And I enjoyed the lesson this morning. It's that question, who am I? What am I doing to advance God's kingdom? What am I doing for the Lord today? He is so worthy, church, of our praise. He's worthy of our worship. And for sometimes for us to just go through life day by day and not give anything a thought, not appreciate what he's given us, We've got an upcoming song called Worthy. He is so worthy, church. He is so worthy. Jesus. It was my cross you bore So I could live In the freedom you died for And now my life is yours, and I I will will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is 
your name. And now my shame is gone. I stand amazed in your love undeniable. Your grace goes on and on, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place you alone deserve our praise you're the name above all names worthy is your name jesus you deserve the praise worthy is your name Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. To him, to him who sits on the throne and unto
singing about some dead God that's still in the tomb. We're not singing about a God that's still on the cross. We're not singing about a God that's made out of wood or stone. But we're singing about a living true God that still sits on His throne and still hears and answers prayer today. Hallelujah! Blessing and honor and glory and power to our Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Give Him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Give Him praise this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, give Him praise this morning. Oh, we worship You, Lord. We thank You this morning, God. Hallelujah. Thank You, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If you have a need this morning, slip it up to Him. He's here, and He wants to meet your need. We just got to recognize and say, God, I need you this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning, God, because you're here amongst us. But God, we know today you sit high, but you look low. And God, you see the hands that's raised all across this building. But God, you know more than just a hand raise. God, you know our needs before we even ask. But God, we come asking God that you would send an answer. God, those that need a healing in their bodies, God, touch them right where they're at this morning. God, those that came in with a limp, God, let them walk out running this morning. God, those that came in depressed, God, let them walk out with joy this morning. God, those that are discouraged today, God, speak a word of encouragement to them. God, we know today, God, you're the answer to every life issue and problem that we face. And God, we raised our hands this morning, signifying, God, we need you. God, we need you this morning. God, move in behalf of your people. Father, we ask it all in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. We call it done by faith. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we give Thank the Lord you, a hand Lord. clap of praise? Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. 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 We don't have to fight our battles on our own. Thank you, Lord. Amen. If you'd like to turn with me, I will be in 2 Kings chapter 4, starting in verse 18. It's good to have our bishop here today. Bishop, would you like to stand and... Greet, greet us today. I don't have to, but thank you. It's good to be here. It's good to hear the things of worship and everything. And God bless you. It's good to feel the power of God moving in our midst. Amen. Amen. I thank God for His goodness and His mercy on His feet and for all that He's doing for all the people in our midst. May God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Second Kings chapter 4, verse 18. If you'd like to stand when you get there, you can do so. To reiterate what Pastor Chris said, today's Family Sunday, so the kids will be in here today. Uh, so there is no children's church this evening, this morning. Um, so let's get started. Second Kings verse 4, chapter, chapter 4, verse 18. Wow. Lord be with me. Okay. When the child had grown, he went out one day to his father among the reapers. And he said to his father, Ow, my head, my head. The father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when they had lifted him and brought him to the mother, the child sat, her, the child sat on her lap till noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door behind him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, why will you go to him today? It's neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, all is well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, urge the animal on and do not slack the pace for me unless I tell you. This morning I want to talk to you about into the unknown. Let's pray. God, we thank you for meeting us here today and being with us today, Lord God. We just pray that uh, your word would continue to be spoken this morning, that you would use me uh, just as your vessel, God. Less of me and more of you today, God. Open our hearts and our ears and our eyes to see, hear, and what, what you have for us today. God, we give you the praise and glory that you can help us through the unknowns of life. We pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right. So, uh, for my, the teenagers that are in this room today, uh, you may recognize this title because in the month of August, this was something that we were talking about uh, on Wednesday nights. And so, I just felt like God laid this message on my heart and he gave me this title to kind of carry on uh, from that. And so, I hope you adults here today will be able to recognize what God has for you today. Uh, this is not a message for teenagers, although teenagers, you can accept it. This is not a message for adults, although, yes, adults, this is a message for you, right? Like, it's a message for everybody, not just a select group of people. Uh, and if you are a young child, maybe you are starting to sing a song from the movie Frozen 2, because, yes, from the movie, movie Frozen 2, there is a song called Into the Unknown. Uh, it is much like the other song from the first Frozen movie, let it go, that is just played repeatedly in my house, because my children love the Frozen movies. Um, anyway, have you ever gone into an unknown territory, and you don't know how to traverse it? 
Like it's three in the morning, you're on vacation, you're in your hotel room, and you need to go to the bathroom, and you can't see because it's not your house, right? We all know our house. We can all walk through it blindfolded, and we know where exactly the chairs and the tables and the dressers, we know exactly where they are. Although sometimes our bed like to jumps out and kicks our toes, right? We get that. But for the most part, we understand where we live. But the unknowns of life is difficult to get through. It's kind of a void that you got to walk into and traverse through. Maybe you get laid off at work and you don't know how bills are going to get paid. That's an unknown. How am I, how, God, how am I supposed to do this? Maybe you're on your way to work one day. This happened to me this, this summer. You're on your way to work one day and your car breaks down in the middle of the road. You're right there at the red light. Light turns green and your car shuts off. And it won't turn on. And you can't move and everybody's honking their horns at you. And they're saying, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm late for work. Yep, so am I. My car won't start. Like, <laughs> go around me. <laughs> what am I supposed to do in those moments? What are you supposed to do in the unknown parts of life? Maybe you go to your doctor for your routine checkup, and it's not so routine because the doctor comes in and says, we have found something. How do you go about life into the unknown? Maybe it's a loved one who passes away unexpectedly. We all have unknowns in life, right? How do we get through it? It can be like this picture. I'm probably going to reference this picture a lot today. Uh, it can be like this picture where it's a giant void and it feels huge and it's humongous and you're just like this little tiny person trying to get through life. How do I go about this void? How do I go about this area of life? That was the case for this woman. Her son had died. Now what? What do I do? And I know that some of you in this room today, maybe you've experienced that, the loss of a child. This woman could have been thinking to herself, what am I supposed to do now? Should I cry? Should I get angry? Should I shake my fist at the Lord? Or do I keep my faith? I don't know how I'm going to journey into this unknown area of life, but I think I'm going to keep my faith. say it again, maybe some of you today have lost a child and this isn't an unknown territory for you today because you've experienced it. We've all got areas of life that we've never experienced before, but we also have areas of life that others have yet to experience. And so follow me. This is going to get confusing, but follow me. With your experience, you can help others who have yet to experience that. And so God gives you the strength to get through the void of the unknown to maybe later help somebody who's getting ready to go through it too. So it's okay to go through the unknown. We don't have to shake our fist at God. We don't have to get upset and get angry. We can cry to him. It's probably a good thing to cry to him. Cry to him, but don't leave him. Keep your faith and keep walking forward. Because you're going to grow and you're going to get experience from it where you can help somebody else through that as well. The unknown is a scary place. But we don't just go through it once in life. It's not a one-time thing. We go through this void of the unknown all the time. You may be like, oh, today's Sunday. I got my routine. Nothing's going to happen. Today is Sunday, September 29th, 2024. Let me tell you, nobody has ever experienced today. This is a day that nobody has any experience of. You may have an idea that I'm going to drive to church, I'm going to do the church thing, I'm going to go home, I'm going to eat my meal, take my Sunday nap, get up and go back to church for the evening. Right? That may be your routine that you go through, but there may be something unknown that happens today. Maybe you drive by six red cars instead of the normal five. Right? Like... There could be small little details of life that we go through that is unknown to us. Or there could be large details of life. May, I, hopefully this doesn't happen to us today. But maybe somebody gets in a car accident. Maybe somebody gets pulled over because you read a red light. Right? Like, there could be an unknown thing that happens today that you're not expecting. For this woman... 
this wasn't the first time she had walked into the unknowns of life. Just a few verses before where we began this morning, we get a glimpse into the life of this lady and her husband. And we'll get there in just a second. She was considered a prominent woman, which literally means she was a great woman. And the word great is sometimes used of wealth, influence, or character. So it may mean that she was of great importance, influence, and character. From our passage, it's easy to see that she was a prominent lady in the community, was somewhat wealthy, and undoubtedly exercised a considerable influence by her spiritual perception and godly character. So she was a good lady, right? It's okay. She was a good lady. She was a great lady for a number of reasons. She was full of faith and good works and undoubtedly had a great deal of love and respect for the teaching of the word. Her godliness and respect for the word is seen in her hospitality to the prophet Elisha. This woman, alongside her husband, because I think it's important to note that she didn't just let some random guy into her house. This woman, along with her husband, opened their home up to Elisha. They fed him, they gave him, uh, him and his servant a place to sleep for the night, and this woman began to recognize Elisha is a guy who comes and goes. He's going this way, and then he comes back through our town, and he goes over here, and then he goes back through our town, and he goes over here. He's probably a man of God. Let's build him a place, a room in our house for him to stay. In chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, it says, Behold, behold now, I know that this is a holy man of God who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small room on the roof with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp so that whenever he comes in, he can go in there. So not only did, she, did they open their home up for this man for a place to eat and sleep, but they literally just added on to their home and said, our home is your home, right? The good old phrase, your, su casa, mi casa, whatever that is, right? Your house is my house. Feel free to be welcomed here. You don't have to come here and continue to put up this, this holy show of, of you know, f- trying to spiritually feed me when we're physically feeding you. You have a place to stay here. Go to your room, go rest, go read, go study, go pray. Go, be in, go spend your intimate, quiet time with God in our house. Whatever you need to do in that room, that is for you. You don't have to sleep on our couch. We gave you a bed. You can sleep on it, right? She showed hospitality to this man of God when he needed it. Shouldn't we do the same? As we see in these verses, she willingly opened her home to those in need. She extended her hand to the needy. She shared in the good things God had given her. This lady was also great because she was interested and wanted to promote the work of God, especially the preaching of the word. She did what she did for Elisha because she perceived he was a man of God. That is, a prophet teaching the word and doing the work of God. By her concern and her actions, she was promoting the preaching of the word. Her actions illustrate the principle of the body functioning together with every believer using their gifts and talents to promote the evangelization of the lost and the edification of the saints. This godly lady took God seriously. She got involved with God's work according to her abilities and the opportunities that God gave her. So many times I think we can get caught up in this whole, what am I supposed to do for God? I don't really want to stand in front of people and preach. That's okay. Maybe God doesn't have that for you. But you can show hospitality like this woman did. You can have a smile on your face. You could be a great door greeter at church on Sunday. And that is not a bad thing. That is not a bad job to have in the body of Christ. There are probably people in this room today who are here because they were met with a smiling face when they came in. Right? So we, we, we don't need to get caught up in this whole aspect of, God, what is it that you want from me? I don't want to preach. I don't want to sing. Like, that isn't the only thing available for the kingdom of heaven. There are great things that God has in place for us. We can do multiple things. This was a vibrant testimony for the Lord and a source of comfort and encouragement to Elisha, who for the most part was ministering in a hostile and idolatrous environment. This family was like an oasis in the desert. Imagine you being an oasis in the desert for somebody outside this building.
Through all of this, she demonstrates a principle that's found in Galatians 6, verses 6 6 through 10. It says, And let the one who is taught the word share all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not marked. For whatever a man sows, this he also reaps. For the one who sows to his own flesh shall from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit shall from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we shall reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do, all, do good to all men, especially those who are in the household of the faith. So when somebody in here is struggling, we shouldn't push them to the side. When a new person comes in, and they look weird, they look different, they, they don't look like you, they don't look like me, we shouldn't push them to the side. This was manifested in her actions and God's reward for her faithfulness. A few things. One, as one who shared in the things Elisha taught, she wanted to share with him all good things which she had, so she saw to it that all his needs were met according to her ability. And you know, this is not my notes, it just came to me. I feel like there's so many times in life where God gives us this great idea and this great plan of, I could do this for God's kingdom. I could help out God. I could help out the kingdom. I could help out the people. But then the enemy likes to come in and say, yeah, but you're so busy. Put that on the back burner. You can do it later. I do that all the time. I feel like God has told me to do things, and I'm just like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And then a month goes by, and I've not gotten to it. I've just been so busy. And that's that's such an easy excuse of I'm just so busy, but I feel like maybe the enemy uses that as the perfect excuse of, yeah, you are so busy. You stay busy. You keep doing those things. You keep raising your family. You keep doing what you need to do. You keep working, because that's what you got to do to provide for your house. But God's saying, I want you to do this. Because if this woman would would not have opened up her house, we don't know what Elisha would have went through. Spoiler alert, she probably wouldn't have gotten her son. We're getting to that. But she probably wouldn't have gotten the son that died on her lap. I'm not saying if you do things for God, you're going to get this huge, miracle, wonderful, great, huge blessing. But you probably will. Whether it's this life or next life, you're probably going to get a blessing that God has in store for you. She was sowing, properly using the blessings God had given. And she was laying up treasure in heaven. She did this while she had the opportunity. She didn't procrastinate. She used her blessings for the blessing of others. Okay, but what about into the unknown? How is this part of her story getting into the unknown? Let's get there. You see, her and her husband were getting on in years. Particularly, the Bible tells us, her husband was getting old. And they did not have a son yet. The son that died that we read about earlier... They had yet to have this son. And so I feel like they're at this point in life where they had just come to this understanding of we're not going to have a child. They were content. They were content with the life they were living. They had tried in the past to have a child, but it never worked. Because in this day and age, to have a son was a huge blessing. It was a huge deal. If we could have a son to carry on our name, this is a great thing. Again, remember, they had a lot of wealth. What are they going to do with it? They're not going to be able to give it to anybody. They wanted to give it to somebody in their family. But they couldn't because they didn't have a child. A child. So for everything the woman and her husband had done for Elisha, Elisha wanted to somehow thank them. 2 Kings 4, verse 11 through 16, it says, One day he came there and turned into the chamber and rested there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call the Shunammite. When they had called her, she stood before him, and he said to him, Say now to her, See, you've taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? What can I do for you to say thank you? To say I appreciate everything that you've done for me? Because a lot of times, I'm going to say it again, a lot of times, like, we probably don't appreciate what people do for us. We don't show them that we appreciate them enough when we should. And so Elisha here is just trying to say, how can I show appreciation to you? How can I show you thanks? 
Because I don't know about you, when people tell me thank you for what you've done, I love it. Right? We all love being thanked. Like, oh, you, you saw you, you saw what I did? Oh, I'm so glad you saw it. Not, not that I'm trying to be egotistical in that. Right? But there's just something inside of us that recognizes, that appreciates being thanked. And you know, you all work. And nobody likes having a pizza party for all their hard work at the end of the year. And yet, that's what happens all the time, right? Like, you guys did such good work. We had, uh, we had record numbers this year. Here's our pizza party. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for those record no- You're welcome for those record numbers, right? Don't know what you're going to do with those record numbers, but I'm sure pizza's in there. Thank you. Anyway, I'm way off track. So he says, should we speak to the king or to the commander? What what should we do for you? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. She's like, I'm good. I'm taken care of. I'm okay. I don't need anything. Verse 14, and he said, what then is to be done for her? Elisha says this to his servant. And so Gehazi, his servant, answers, well, she has no son, and her husband's old. So Elisha says, call her. And when he called her, she stood in the doorway, and he said, At this season, about next time next year, you're going to embrace a son. And she says, No, my lord, O man of God, do not lie to your servant. Don't give me false hope. I've tried year after year after year after year. I've had hope and hope and hope and hope, and nothing has happened. Don't give me false hope, prophet. Don't lie to me. I know I can't have children. We are way beyond the age to have children. Don't give me that false hope. Have you been there? I've been there. You've given up hope. I think as a culture... As a society, I think a lot of us have just kind of given up hope. And I say that because there's a phrase that we have that kind of leads to that. And that phrase, I hate this phrase, is, it is what it is. Have you ever said that? I hate that phrase. I hate it. I had a boss one time that would say that all the time. Oh, well, you know, it is what it is. So you're going to pay me and my coworkers a week's worth of money to do this one job that if we would just go buy the equipment could get it done in two hours. That's a lot of wasted money and time on our part. Yeah, well, it is what it is. There's nothing we can do about it. There is something that can be done about it. And we as a society of people can get this into our mind of, I tried the whole praying thing and, you know, nothing happened and I guess it is what it is. I guess I just got to deal with this. I've been praying for my son and my daughter. They're lost. They're out, you know, in the taverns every night, and they're drinking, and they're doing all the crazy things of life, and they're not living for the Lord, and, well, I guess it is what it is. This woman, we've tried for years, and we've never had a child. It is what it is. We're, we're content. We're okay. We don't need anything. just get content. We just think that it's not going to happen, so maybe God's answer is no, so I'll just move on and I'll start praying for something else. I feel like it is what it is, is such a defeated phrase. I don't know about you, but when I've prayed and never given up, things change. Things happen. It is what it is, doesn't exist in God's, in God's narrative, in his vocabulary. He can change things in an instant. He can change things after 20 years of no change happening. God can change things. When I continue to pray and put my faith in God, eventually things change. 
I had a friend of mine, if you're on the text line, you probably saw this. I have a friend of mine who was in a motorcycle accident, I think it was a couple weeks ago now. And he lost his leg, he lost some fingers, he broke his, his pelvis, like, horrible. Uh, he was just driving, and the car was trying to pass, and, and just went right into him. Uh, I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like a good situation. That sounds like he probably isn't going to live. He was in a coma for a long time. However, his family started praying. I sent a message out asking the church to pray. Many churches were praying for him. And he woke up this week. He's alert. He's awake. Because when we go into the unknown of life, if we just give up and say, oh, well, it is what it is, we're defeated in that. We can walk into the unknown knowing God is on our side, knowing he's going to make the change, and he's going to be there to make a difference. We don't have to give up, is what I'm saying. I'll reference this picture again. That guy on there looks super tiny compared to everything that's going on. And struggles and trials of life can look that big. You can feel that tiny when you're trying to walk through the unknown. But when God's with you, he's bigger than anything. He can get you through it all. We don't have to walk and say, well, it is what it is. I'll fumble my way through. God's with you. It is what it is, but it doesn't have to be. Yes, Shunammite lady, you're getting along. Your husband is getting along in years. You've tried and you've tried. You've never received a son. It is what it is, but not anymore. Verse 17, but the woman conceived and she bore a son about that time, the following spring, just as Elisha had said to her. Welcome to the unknown. She spent her whole life never having a son, and now she does. And anyone who's ever had a first kid knows there's, that's an unknown journey. <laughs> I've enjoyed all of my rest, and now I have to get up every two hours to feed this thing? What? Why? This woman had accepted a lot in her life. She was involved in serving the Lord. She, again, remember, she was a great woman. She was serving the Lord. She was doing what she was supposed to be doing for God's kingdom. And now, all of a sudden, she has this son who she's probably dreamt of and has wanted and hoped for, but gave up hope because it is what it is. Nothing's going to change until she opened her house up to a man of God and began to serve him and showed hospitality to him. And through Elisha, God, God through Elisha, allowed her to have a son. Suddenly, after many years, she's faced with this promise of a child, with all the joy, responsibility, and change that would bring. Scripture doesn't really give us her response, but I think we can begin to grasp what immediately went through her mind. The joy and hope, as well as the fear of disappointment. Am I going to be a good mom? After all these years of dreaming of having a son, am I going to be a good parent? You ever do that when you pray and God answers your prayers and then you're just like, am I going to be good at this? God, I've been praying for this new job for years and it's been years and years and years. This is the job that I want and then you finally get it and you're like, I don't know that I can do this. Should, should I go to work tomorrow? I think I'm going to go back to my old job because I know how to do that job. I hate that job, but I, at least I know how to do it. You see, there's good things about the unknown as well. There's things that God will lead you to that is unknown to you, but God knows every detail about it, and he's going to walk with you through it. The unknown isn't always a scary place. The unknown sometimes is just taking that step forward with God, knowing God's going to catch your foot. And he's going to be there with you. The issue of children had been settled long ago for her. She'd accepted it or resigned herself to life without a child. But once again, it becomes an issue and a hope, but also this fear and vulnerability. With the prospects of this, there was a short lapse in her faith. We must learn by faith to overcome and handle all of our fears as we trust the good hand of God. We all tend to become settled and comfortable in our lives as they are. Any real change means becoming more vulnerable and susceptible to pain, to pressure, and the things which can bring sorrow and suffering. Or it can mean a test of our allegiance to our Lord because he gives us our desires. It's so easy for us to cling to them 
rather than to the Lord. Maybe you've had that happen in your life. You've prayed, you've prayed, you've prayed, you've prayed, you've got it, and then you held on to that. And then you started to distance yourself from God. Maybe you're like, no, that's never happened to me. But maybe somebody who used to sit next to you got that, and now they're no longer in the church today. Because they were more about the blessing from God than they were about God himself. This was definitely going to be an unknown journey for her. It is what it is. There's no more. It was now time for the unknown. All right, now, let's fast forward, rewind, whatever we do. Let's get back to where we started this morning in verse 18. When the child had grown, he was in the fields with his father. When suddenly his head was hurting, he was taken inside the house where he then died on his mother's lap. His mother took him to the room that they built for the prophet Elijah and laid him on Elisha's bed. She called for her husband. Send me a servant and a donkey. I'm going to go see Elisha. And in typical male husband fashion, he questions her. He says, what are you talking about? Our son is dead, and you want to go see this man? We only go to the church, we only go see, see the prophet when there's a new moon and where there's a Sabbath. It's neither today... Our son's dead. Why do you want to leave the house? I love what she says. She says, all is well. Maybe that's a good subtitle for today's message. Into the unknown, all is well. It's scary. I don't know what I'm going to do, but God's on my side, so all is well. It's scary, I don't know what, it's, what I'm going to do, but I'm going to go to the church and I'm going to ask for prayer. And I'm going to lean on the Lord because all is well. I don't have to do it on my own. All is well. Verse 25, so she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, Look, there's the Shunammite. Run at once to meet her and say, Is all well with you? Is all well with your husband? Is all well with your child? So Gehazi runs and meets her, and she says it again, all is well. And then she keeps going to the prophet. Verse 27, and when she came to the mountain to the man of God, she caught hold of his feet, and Gehazi came to push her away. But the man of God said, leave me alone, for she's in bitter distress, and the Lord's hidden it from me and has not told me. Think about that. Elisha is a man of God. He's a prophet of God. God speaks to Elisha to speak to the people. And in this moment, Elisha doesn't know what's going on because God hasn't told him what's going on. So yeah, of course he's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. She's in severe distress. What is going on? He tells his servant, hang on, just a moment. What's going on? In her distress, verse 28, she says, did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Isn't that true? She didn't ask. She, did, she told him that she was good. Mr. Elisha, Mr. Prophet Man, I, I don't need anything. And he says, you're going to have a son next year. And so in all of the unknowns of raising a child, and then at some point he dies, she's probably thinking to herself, why would you give me this child just for him to die? But at the same time, she knew the only way her son would live was to seek out the Lord and to seek out this prophet. He said, Elisha said to Gehazi in verse 29, Tie up your garment, take my staff in your hand, and go. If you meet anyone, do not greet him, and if anyone greets you, do not reply. Lay my staff at the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. Meaning, I'm not going to let your servant do this job. You're going to come and do this for me. Verse 31, Gehazi went on in the head and laid the staff at the face of the child, but there was no sound or sound of life. Therefore he returned to meet him and told them, the child is not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child laying dead on his bed, so he went in and shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and laid on the child, putting his mouth on his mouth, his eyes on his eyes, and his hands on his hands. 
as, and as he stretched himself upon him, the flesh of the child became warm. Then he got up again, walked once back and forth in the house, and went up and stretched himself on him. The child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Then he summoned Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her, and when she came to, to him, he said, Pick up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she picked up her son and went out. This Shunammite woman demonstrated her faith was growing and active by her attitudes and her works. Faith needs to grow. It cannot stand still. Because when you think your faith is standing still, it's actually regressing. We must progress in our life of faith and grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. This Shunammite's faith grew. Her faith was demonstrated by her desire to know the word, by her hospitality, by her contentment, by being willing to taking a risk, and finally, by her calm dependence in the midst of great sorrow as she sought God's solution and answer to the loss of her son. To truly live by faith means we must learn to be vulnerable and trust God with all of our fears and all of our anxieties and all of our unknowns. If we're going to experience the maximum amount of life to see the power of God. Would you stand with me? Worship team, you can return to the stage. When she was faced with a great unknown, she ran to the Lord. To live by faith also means learning to immediately go to the Lord in all of life. Not only in its trials, its pressures or calamities or the, you know, the simple unknowns, but in everything. Because we believe that he is the God of all wisdom and comfort. And he alone is able to direct our lives. We, not see, we may not see an immediate solution or deliverance from our problems as the Shunammite did in receiving her son back to life. But believing in the Lord's compassion, his love, and eternal purpose, we can find comfort and hope and know that God will answer our need and our prayers in a better time and a better way. We can safely say, I can journey into the unknown because all is well when it's in the hands of the Lord. Today, if you feel like you're in a place of, maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and he's saying, yeah, you've given up. Maybe you haven't physically actually said the phrase, it is what it is. But you can look back and you can recognize that is the life that I'm living. It is what it is. This problem that I've been praying for is never going to find a solution. I guess it is what it is. I guess I should just give up on it. This unknown journey of life that I'm trying to traverse and trying to get through, you don't have to do it alone. As this Shunammite woman did, she ran to God. That's what we should do too. If today you feel like there's an unknown journey in front of you, if today you feel like there's, you've given up and you've said, it is what it is, I'm done, I don't need it, I want to encourage you today, it's not what it is. God can make a difference. God can walk through that unknown with you, and he can allow everything to be well. Would you be willing this morning to come and stand at the altar or kneel at the altar, whatever it feels like you need to do, and say, God, today's the day that I say all is well. I lean on you, I give it to you, I trust you with it once again. All is well. As they sing, if you'd like to come, please come. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. And what he did for me on Calvary is more than enough. Oh, I trust in God, 
my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Yes, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission, all is at rest. And I know the author of tomorrow has ordered my steps. So this is my story. And this is my song. I'm praising my risen King and Savior all the day long. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Yes, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail he will never fail i sought the lord and he heard and he answered i sought the lord and he heard and he answered i sought the lord and he heard and he answered that's why i trust him that's why I trust Him. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust Him. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. I sought the Lord, and He heard, and He answered. That's why I trust Him. That's why I trust in God, my Savior, the One. Who will never fail? He will never fail. Oh, I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. I trust in God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Cause I sought the Lord and he heard and he answered. I sought you, Lord. And you heard, and you answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust in God, my Savior, the one who never fail. Oh, I trust in God, 
my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Yes, I trust in God. Hallelujah. He will never fail you. When you're in the unknown, when you're in this void of just feeling like, what do I do? He will never fail you. You can lean on him and you can know that all is well if you've got him with you. Run to the Lord. And if you have to ignore some people like she did on the way, run to the Lord. Run to the Lord because all is well with him. Let's pray. God, we love you and thank you so much that you don't leave us, you don't forsake us, you don't let us just traverse the unknown of life by ourselves. But God, you are there with us, you give us your strength, and you let us know all is well because we have put our faith in you. God, I pray that you would build our faith today. Help it to not stay stagnant, but help us to progress in our faith today, Lord. And Lord, when the unknowns come, Once again, help us run to you and know all is well. We thank you for this in your precious name, Jesus. And everybody said, amen. God bless you today. Have a great afternoon. We hope to see you tonight at 6 o'clock. Board members need to meet with the pastor right after service.